Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and today I'm going to be playing the worst tier 7 tanks in the game. So what are they, at least with regards to win ratio on the last 30 days on the European server? Well, they are going to be ba -ba 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 -ba, the T-71 CMCD. So this is the tier 7 American light tank, and the CMCD is basically like the DA, the autoloading one, just without the autoloader. So I guess that's what significantly holds it back, right? This vehicle, its DPM is actually really good. It's got 2000 base DPM. I guess the problem with the tank is it doesn't hit very hard 150. But then again, 150 doesn't really hold the vehicle, but well, a tank like the Comet back considering that the Comet has like 145 alpha. you think I'd know after playing a thousand games at it. So, the T-71 CMCD, I can't believe this, but I actually just spawned in on one of the best maps, if not the best map you can get for any light tank in the game. But I'm a little bit nervous. Do you know why? Because this is a very tall light tank, and so it actually gets pretty poor camo rating. And so, oh, I'm just not sure if I'm really going to be the efficient scout that I want to be. Anyway, look, when you scout on, on Prokhorovka, you've got two choices. One is that you make your way down the east, and two is that you make your way down the west. I think you're actually missing out if you don't go down the west on this map, if you've got a reasonable scout. I'm using vents, coated optics, and a gun rammer on this. I don't have a second set of equipment because I haven't unlocked uh, it on the field mod. If I did, I would most likely drop the gun rammer for an exhaust to be able to pump up the camera rating of this tank because I could just get spotted so horribly as I do this, but I'm hoping it's not going to be the case and I don't get lit up. And there aren't any tier 8 light tanks on the enemy team, uh, because there aren't any tier 8 tanks in this game, which means that nobody's going to be using a commander's vision system, because you don't get a commander's vision system until you get to tier 8. Okay, so we've already found a Hellcat, we found a T-3485M, hopefully my team is going to blitz that Hellcat out of here. Now that beautiful Star Spangled Banner hopefully won't save you, Hellcat. Unfortunately, it looks like it is, um, as my team failed to be able to handle that. All right, now that the T-3485M has fallen back a little bit, I'm actually going to advance a touch. Uh, I'm very nervous. I'm, I'm in a, a glass cannon of a light tank that's basically a big box, just hoping that these bushes are going to be able to help me out. Incredibly worried about my vehicle's camo rating. So I think I can just afford to stay here for a second. We'll get some vision across at the Black Prince, and these kind of bushes are absolutely phenomenal for doing this. Okay, that set has found me. Okay, we've got to go into the dip and hope he doesn't hit me with HE shells here. Hopefully I'll scare him off and he'll get shot by my friends. Very cool, very cool. Cool under pressure there. Could have been an absolute disaster. Oh my lord, little Hellcat, why'd you do this to me? Hopefully you're going to go down. Come on, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Come on, team, come on, team. You can kill that Hellcat. That's the second time he's tried to get me there. Unfortunately, now I'm in a dip, and I'm stunned for the next eight seconds. So, uh, my team didn't manage to kill the setter, and they didn't manage to stop that Hellcat from escaping, which makes me very nervous. But I've been using this bush a lot recently to sometimes be able to sneak my way back up without getting spotted. Very nervous about this though. I'm just trying to dip my teeth. Teeth? I don't think you dip teeth into the bath. And I think I got spotted by the T-3485M because he popped up on my map there. Luckily the artillery missed me. Uh, the T-3485M just fell back. So there might be a chance for me to be able to get back up again. I'm going to take another risk here. I don't think I'm going to get spotted doing this, but I need to regain the bush position. Um, kind of worried that the setter might try and do the spotting run that he did against me the previous time. Now I've managed to get up back into the bush because the T-3485M hasn't spotted me. I think I'm just going to hang here. I really hope my team don't push too much further forwards. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be a little bit nervous. Uh, there are, the bushes become a little bit more sporadic here, so I need my team to take out the T-3485M before I'm able to continue my advance. I really don't want you to sit behind me, otherwise you're going to make me very unhappy, uh, because if he gets lit up and the tanks are there, they'll probably hit me in the bush. Uh, my team seem to want to just continue on this warpath. I really don't think this is very sensible. All I really need them to do is to just chill, and I need somebody to take out the T-3485M. As soon as he's down, I should be able to advance back along here. But, um, yeah, please don't come and sit behind me, my friend. Please don't come and sit behind me, my friend. Please don't come and sit behind me, my friend. 
Uh, luckily, there aren't going to be any vehicles over there, so they shouldn't blind fire me in this situation. That's a different Super Hellcat. Or maybe it's the same one that we spotted earlier, actually, who didn't actually take any damage. Okay, the suit. I just don't understand how these players are able to just chill in the middle of the map. Um, I am getting some spotting. Uh, guess we just gotta wait and hope that our team is gonna do something. Oh, you're making me so nervous right now, bro. Hopefully he doesn't block the bush line, otherwise I won't be able to make it across there. I'm kind of a little bit baffled as to the fact that he isn't getting spotted at all. Uh, so maybe I can actually make a move across here. Uh, not that, like that though. Oh dear goodness. I'm sorry, Mr. Churchill. I really didn't expect him to be able to get away with that. And I spotted the Hellcat. Come on, finish him off, finish him off, finish him off, finish him off. Come on, team. I gotta take the risk. I gotta take the risk. My team aren't doing anything. I've gotta take the risk. Um, all right, I'm going to advance along here. Hopefully not get spotted. Hopefully spot this, this setter. There's probably another Super Hellcat. Oh, no, that's not a good play. And there's the setter. He found me. Well played, setter. All right, so... I tried. I tried to spot for my team. I tried to um, I tried to get them some vision. I f maybe it was a bit of a brash play there to, to kill the Hellcat and to advance. But I just saw, I just thought that with uh, my opponents locking me in from the east and maybe that they didn't have many tanks towards the west that maybe it would be a good idea. You could see that this line of destroyed tanks was just growing and growing and growing back towards the map. And I felt like I wanted to make a play to be able to take it down. Anyway, 2,100 combined. It's definitely not the best game I've ever had for a T-71 CMD, uh, CMCD, especially on Prokhorovka. It looks like the enemies are knocking my tank around now as they're advancing their way through the lines. Anyway, that was the worst Tier 7 light tank in the game. Why don't we play the worst Tier 7 tank destroyer, which in theory is the IKV-90B. Are you serious? Can people really not play Swedish tank destroyers like the IKV-90B? I guess the reason why the IKV-90B um, doesn't work is because a lot of people probably aren't using the, the mechanics of it. When you play something like a UDES, uh, its bigger brother at tier 8, that's all about a really high penetration gun and a reasonable amount of alpha damage. This vehicle doesn't really have either of those two attributes, and unfortunately I don't have the reinforced suspension, otherwise I would be a lot faster in this tank. Anyway, uh, it's, it's, I'm not going to be spending the free experience just to be able to get the field mods, at least yet. But seriously, getting that reinforced suspension on a tank destroyer and having the 15% better ground resistances just absolutely revolutionizes the way that you can play your vehicles. So, our T-71 CMCD game wasn't great, especially for the map, but it, it, I felt like I, I did as much as I could in the situation. If my team had managed to kill that setter or the Hellcat, I think I probably could have been able to take that game down. But well played to the setter, which is the better scouting light tank. Can't believe I'm saying it, but the British vehicle, actually the better one. All right, so where am I going to be taking my IKV-90B? I could take it into the middle of the map. I could take it down the west. There is a nice position that you can use in the bushes over here where hopefully you can be able to shoot some tank destroyers at the back and even some heavy tanks. It can be a, a little bit dangerous though for blind fires and also sometimes you can just go into that situation and the enemies don't advance and then you just don't get to do anything for the entire battle which also really sucks. But I think I'm going to go for it anyway. So uh, I, I'm hope I was hoping that the Comet was going to come up as like the worst tier 7 tank, right? Oh shame. It's not the case. My beloved Comet's still doing at least reasonably well even 10 years pretty much after it was first introduced into the into the game. All right, so we've got a T-52 who's making their way in towards the middle. And I'm just going to set up in a position like this just to see if I can be able to get an early shot off. Doesn't look like... Oh, there there they are. But I'm not going to be able to get a shot through these roofs unless they fall back. Maybe if they fall back, I can shoot through. I'm really not used to this sniping position. I'm not going to lie. I think I might have a shell soon. I do. Just about... I should have taken the shot. Yeah, I'm not very experienced at, at being a camper, really. Uh, most of the vehicles I played are vehicles that I can be able to apply some pressure to my opponents because that's my preferred way to be able to play the game. So in this kind of a situation, I could sit back there where the tank destroyers are and it probably would be the, the more sensible play, but I just feel like being a little bit more cheeky and aggressive. So I'm going to try and take the fight towards the enemy team here. Uh, we're going to get forward to hopefully not get absolutely nailed by all the tank destroyers. And because we've got a Skoda in the middle of the map, I'm going to try and get some vision out. I'm going to try and get forwards and use the camera rating 
of this vehicle along with my binoculars to hopefully be able to spot some of my opponents. But I've got to be careful because my hit points won't last long against a WZ. So I'm spotted immediately, which means that there's TDs, uh, TDs in bushes. I've also got to be careful against the artillery that the enemy team have because that could be an absolute nightmare right now. The Swedish tank destroyer definitely doesn't take hits very well at all, boys and girls. So you've got to watch out for that. Alright, so I'm just going to make my way over here. I'm, I'm kind of concerned that we're not pushing. Um, what I might be able to do is actually try and use this bush to drive up from this angle without getting spotted. This could work. Am I going to get spotted if I do this? Am I going to get spotted if I do this? Wow, it doesn't look like I did. All right, let's park the bus in the bush, activate our binoculars, and hope that we can be able to get some spots at any TDs over there. Okay, we spotted an E25. Perfect. Look at that. IKV out spotting one of the most sneaky TDs you're ever going to play. I'm waiting for my team to shoot at him. Nobody seems to want to fire at them. Looks like I'm also spotting the M4A1 in the middle of the map, which is a little bit concerning. Can nobody really shoot this E25? Really? All right, I will. And this is where this tank kind of sucks, because you fire, great, you do 240 damage. And now what? Now you're now you're just at a risk, right? Uh, it just doesn't really have the alpha damage that any of the other tier 7 TDs have, and it doesn't have the armor that a vehicle like the British tank, the 87, has. And so I think that's really where this vehicle does suck. It just doesn't really have that all-purpose TD nature. It is quite well-rounded. Uh, but it just doesn't really have the, the the TD firepower. Luckily, it looks like my team are doing a fairly good job at holding the back on the other flank. And oh, hello. I could actually shoot that M4A1 FL10. Maybe I'll try and blind fire. Oh, I should have gone for the Lanson there. I think I missed an opportunity on the Lanson. Oh, no. Is he going to be able to take out my friend now? Is he going to just come around the corner? I don't think he will. All right. Here comes the E25. <gasps> Can you believe it? My team won Prokhorovka. What an absolute bunch of legends. Oh, oh, what? Whoa, no. Well, there you go. There are the TDs. Unfortunately, I'm not very well anymore. Oh, dear. E25 just literally driving straight into our team. I think he just rammed a VK. I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, probably not thinking very much when I think about it. Uh, unfortunately for me, I think I was so happy about that Prokhorovka victory. I'm going to die to the, um, uh, the M4A1 FL10. He's able to spot me. Oh, there he is. He's actually running away. And because I, I don't have coated optics and I have binoculars on this vehicle, he actually spotted me without me seeing him. Okay, well, I'm reduced to a one-shot. The, the question is now is do I play like super defensive or do I try and be a little bit more cheeky uh, before this game? Looks like it might be a win. We're up by 3,000 hit points. I'm still absolutely baffled that we won the Prokhorovka game. Well played to my team for defending the corner of the map so well. Man, tank destroyers like this. This should be a fairly good map for this tank, but it just doesn't seem to be working out for me. Maybe I'm not putting myself in the correct positions for lines of fire. Uh, or maybe it's just maybe it's just one of those unfortunate events where you're playing against higher tier TDs that have higher alpha damage than you and arguably is good camo and definitely have way better armor. Um, I'm going to have to warn my team that the WZ was here. Always a good idea to let them know exactly what there, what there is that's camping at the back of the map. That's the, uh, the 111. No wonder it hit me so hard. 538 damage. It's a big old alpha damage gun. Guess I'm lucky that he didn't fire HE at me. Definitely something that you should do against a vehicle like this because it has absolutely no armor. Uh, Mr. Type 64 wants to advance through. Doesn't seem to be the case. Right now, it's just about chilling, really. If the WZ wants to kind of camp at the back, I've lost so many hit points that I'm not going to be able to make plays. One of those days. But who would have thought, even though I'm playing the worst tier 7 tanks, my team seem to be carrying me right now. I'll take that. Um, I'll take that indeed. Okay, so there's the Challenger. There's the WZ. We got some vision on them. We bounce off their armor. We don't get spotted, though, so that's an advantage in itself. Um, trying to think about whether I should try and flank around right now. I'm a 50-50 to die to the Achilles, I believe. I think an Achilles has got 150 alpha. But then again, why did that Achilles only hit me for 110? Maybe he's using a stock gun. I don't know, man. All these kind of mid-tiers, those obscure mid-tiers. I believe an Achilles uses the same gun that's on the, the Black Prince with a... 
171 pen and 150 alpha, but then how would that be rolling so low? Okay, so the, if the Achilles is at the back of the map, I'm about to lose a lot of hit points. If he's not, well, at least I'll get to do something. Damage achieved. Come on, Arty, Pick him apart. Oh, this is going to be a pressure situation. Well, not for me, for the T-52. I'll say thank you to him. He got me out of trouble there. Um, all right, let's go after this challenger and hope that the Achilles just doesn't have shots on me because we're going to have to get some damage done in this game. Otherwise, it's going to be a horrendous battle for me. There we go. And there's the Achilles. Oh, you're kidding me. Blooming Arty. The one that you didn't expect. Well, at least I got another couple of shots in. Um, I got a little bit more vision as well on the VZ. This is not a great game for a tier 7. Uh, we just got just under 1,500 uh, combined. That's definitely not the best result I've ever had in a vehicle like this. But considering that we got hit so hard, you know what? It's, it's not the end of the world. So, why don't we take a look at the result on Prokhorovka? I'm actually amazed. I want to know who carried me on Prokhorovka for that victory in the T-71 CMCD. I really didn't expect that. So it was actually a Hotchkiss. Amazing. Well played. The best EU player. Kind of living up to the hype, actually. Well done, man. 3,000 damage there and 1,700 spotting. Well, you out outperformed me in that game. I guess the Hotchkiss probably went for more of an active role in that battle. And so thanks for the carry, bud. And that IKV game, it's a third class mastery. So that is still better than 50% of people have achieved, which isn't saying much considering probably what a poorly played vehicle this is. I think people probably absolutely detest the IKV 90B because it's one of those stepping stone tanks to be able to get towards the awesome Udez. Probably a lot of the more dedicated players will realize that and maybe they'll even free experience their way through the IKV 90B or even use their blueprints to avoid having to play it in the first place. Okay, so we've played the worst light tank, we've played the worst tank destroyer, why don't we play the worst medium tank, which is apparently the T-43. And I, I can imagine the reason why the T-43 probably has such a bad win ratio it's most likely that people just aren't playing it because there are kind of premium tanks in the game and it's tier. There are lots of other vehicles that you could be able to get your hands on. And I think a lot of people would want to play a T-44 at tier 8 or even play the awesome T-34-85 at tier 6. And so I guess it's this kind of middle child tank that just nobody really thinks about. But does it deserve such a, a bad win ratio? Probably not. So I just realized I've got myself a field mod and so I'm going to take a second set of equipment on this tank. And I feel as if I want to try and probably have more of a spotting build on this vehicle or maybe a close quarters combat build. I think we'll go with vents, we'll have an exhaust on there and then we'll keep our binoculars and that'll be for when I feel like I need to be a little bit more sneaky. But apart from that we're going to have a gun rammer build. Now a lot of people might want to have a more of a, a durability build on this tank for some of your city maps if you end up getting on those quite a lot but um i'm just gonna deal with what i have and i really feel like vision on medium tanks can be of paramount importance all right so let's jump into the battle with the t43 so this tank has pretty much got the the same kind of firepower as the previous vehicle it has a 144 millimeter caliber gun sorry no not a 144 millimeter caliber gun what are you talking about it has an 85 millimeter caliber gun that has 144 millimeters of penetration and oh dear anyone got that combat build for this map oh well nevertheless we'll go for it anyway so i've got binoculars on this tank which isn't going to give me very good uh view range when I'm moving, but it'll be very nice when I'm stationary. But I don't really feel like Ensk is a view range based map. Oh, the delicious irony. Quacky Baby goes and puts an exhaust in a second build on this vehicle, spends 200,000 credits on it, and then doesn't even get to play a map where there's any kind of vision potential. So I pr probably would recommend you going out and using a durability device, maybe with a gun rammer and vents on this thing. Or maybe even something with a bit of better gun handling. All right, so I'm gonna take my T43 up into this bush location up here. Hopefully I'm not going to get spotted doing it, although it's quite likely a light tank will be able to see me. There's the T-37. He has spotted me, as as you would expect. I'm just going to try and get rid of this building. I'm not sure if you can get rid of the whole building or just the roof. Oh, you can get rid of the whole building here. All right. So I kind of want to sneak up into this bush 
uh, and try and activate my binoculars. Somehow we've already lost two tier 6 tanks before this game has even begun. But there are quite a few vehicles still spotted on the enemy team that we've got to watch out for. Astron Rex. There's a Tiger that's seemingly wanting to push to the back of the map. I should be okay penetrating standard rounds on this Tiger, he says as he fails to be able to hit the tank. This tank's DPM at 2000 is definitely no joke. It's not quite as good as the Comet within that regard, but it does hit harder so you don't have to hit as often, which is quite nice. Alright, so we don't actually manage to continue spotting that Tiger and I just got spotted and oh my lord, that Tiger's firing HE. That could be a little bit juicy, boys and girls. Whenever I find a heavy tank with a low caliber gun firing HE at me, I always put the mental marker on that maybe we should go and try and fight them as quickly as we possibly can. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask the T-3485M to help me and I'm going to push forwards to try and go after this... Uh, little American light tank. Unfortunately, we miss our first shot. Is he going to try and fight me here? He actually comes around the corner. The tiger has actually stopped loading HE now. So he's he's learning, unfortunately. He's learning. Maybe he's going to tag me again. He does tag me again and so hard. Nearly 600 damage in just two shots. And there's an Astron Rex who's probably thinking about coming after us now. Either that or their AFK, one of the two. Hopefully our light tanks will actually start to do their job in trying to spot the Tiger out. And note, the Astron is definitely not AFK. There's that T-52 who wanted to spot us. I would go around the corner and try and help this guy out, but I'm not going to push him in this situation. I don't want to be that guy. Um, so maybe I can try and reverse side scrape here. Hopefully this guy won't push me out, though. I didn't push you out, mate. Please don't push me out. Uh, I still got to be careful against this Astron Rex. This is a pretty brutal start. How, fu how awkward is it that I thought that I was going to be farming the tiger and then the tiger actually farmed me pretty badly. Uh, I'm going to reverse across the open here just so I can get to, once again, reverse side scraping. Which you can do with this rear mounted tank. Got to be a little bit careful when you do this. Don't think that it's going to be absolutely perfect. Alright, so I don't know man. I don't really want to push into that tiger. Uh, he's absolutely slapped me a couple of times. Um, and I really need my light tanks to maybe try and advance across there and try and get into those bushes to be able to spot them out. I don't have a very good crew on this vehicle, so my camera rating is very poor. So I don't really fancy my chances in a, in a vision fight. Especially when I'm using binoculars and not using coated optics. I can't really just go around the corner and casually take my chances. And then the Astron Rex as well. I mean, he's got 320 Alpha and he's got a 4 second intraclip reload on a 5 round autoloader. So I don't really want to get caught out by him either. The enemy just aren't making any mistakes right now. And when they don't make any mistakes, it's hard to punish. Ooh, there's the T-52. Hopefully somebody gets him. All right, the Astron managed to get a big shot in. Nice. I'll say thank you to the Super Chaffee for that kill. Um, if I get spotted here, I'm pretty sure this Astron's just going to absolutely smash me. Uh, ooh, there's the Tiger. There's the Tiger. Astron might be down. He might only have one more shell left or something. He's actually tracked and he's gone. I'm going to go after this Tiger now. Don't think he'll be able to spot me. Oh my gosh, he can. He's actually got really good view range there. Um, got to try and get through those buildings. He'll shoot me there for sure now. Man, that Tiger, I really underestimated them. I thought they were going to be quite bad, and they ended up actually being pretty damn good. He's actually coming around the... Well, when I say pretty darn good, he's actually now managing to get caught out pretty darn badly. And can you believe I bounced? Otherwise, I would have been able to take it down. Alright, so really not a particularly wonderful game for me so far. I really underestimated that tiger and he taught me some respect. As you would probably expect going after a tiger, right? Those things, they're not like the tigers of old, where they were a little bit more toothless than they are now. Talk about toothless, my, my team's not going to last very long unless we get stuck in. Um, don't want to get hit by this SU. Uh, is that guy afk or is he still here no, it looks like he's afk well we'll go and finish him off hopefully not die to the su for my greed oh my lord this tank's gun handling isn't like the comet is it oh there's the su oh wow that could have been an absolute disaster i'm gonna pretend like i'm gonna come around the corner for him and then hopefully my friends will start nailing him um i can't take that risk right now uh I just can't take that risk. But I've also got to try and make sure I'm here for them. He doesn't look like he's aiming at me just quickly. Oh, we can get him. We can get him. We actually set him on fire with that shell. He repairs his engine. YouTube. What? YouTube, what was that miss? That's what happens when you, you don't have vert stabs on this vehicle. But I don't think this thing can use vert stabs, unless I'm mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's only tier 8 when Soviet tanks start being able to use vert stabs. 
come to Papa, Mr. Yag Panther. I should have you. Nice. First blood of the game for me, which isn't really first blood when you think about it at all. Mr. SU not aiming at me. Now Mr. SU aiming at me. Didn't even see that T-3485. Well, I'll just sit here and then the T-3485M can get the kill. Look, I'll even shoot at the ground for him. There you go. <laughs> what are you going to do, man? You hope that I'm just going to drive around the corner and feed you? I'm greedy. I'm, I'm a greedy baby, but I'm not that greedy. Well, what is happening today? I'm playing the tanks with the worst win ratios, and I guess I'm just getting carried by my teams. Uh, but you know what? I'll take the wins any day of the week. All right, so T-34-3, uh, T-34, or T-43 even, sorry. Definitely not the most epic game of my World of Tanks career. Talking about epic, I got an epic reward there. A turbocharger and a day of premium, I'll take it. So we actually finished fourth on experience and fifth on damage. And I'd say that's including some pretty bad luck. Just just my opinion, but I probably would say that considering my performance. Just, I, I, I just guess this is why these vehicles have the win ratios that they do. They just feel like they're so lackluster. All right, so we played a light tank, we played a tank destroyer, we played a medium tank. Now let's play the worst heavy tank. And it's actually not the Tiger P. I'm sure a lot of you were hoping it was going to be. I'm going to play the IS. So another tier 7 Soviet tank that seems to be underperforming, at least with regards to its win ratio. Although I probably do think that it's going to be uh, the case that they're underperforming because a lot of people uh, who are new are probably playing them. Now there are two competitive guns that you can use on this tank. You can either use the 100mm gun or you can use the 122mm gun. Now I personally prefer the Alpha on a vehicle like this and so that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for the Alpha. Now equipment wise on this vehicle you'd probably do best in using an accuracy device to be able to try and improve the horrible uh, accuracy that the vehicle has. But I'm actually going to go with vents, gun rammer and a turbo to try and make pressure plays against my opponents. So the IS, this all-round tier 7 brawling heavy tank, and whew, I like this matchup. Didn't like the previous one, but this one, this one looks pretty good. All right, I'm getting quite lucky with my matchmaking today. Usually it's kind of like tier 9 city, but I don't think we've even met any tier 9 tanks today. All right, cool. Well, let's try and make use of it. We've spawned in on a city map, Runeberg, in an IS. What am I going to do? Well, I think I'm going to start in this position here, try and get a sneaky shot along, even in a very poor sniping tank. And then probably I'm going to try and slinky back and then go around and try and put out some alpha damage and make some trades. Now, when you're playing the IS, it literally is, in my opinion, all about that alpha damage. Of course, depending on what gun you take. If you took the 100mm caliber gun, then your alpha damage is not going to be quite so good. Well, not nearly as good. You're only going to have 250 instead of 390. But I feel like it's the 390 is what makes this tank special. Uh, of course, you've got vehicles like the Oni that have derp guns. But it doesn't look like that player is using the derp gun. Looks like he's going for the AP gun that has 330. But 330 ain't 390, bud. And to be able to uh, deliver big old cracking shells in an IS just feels awesome. And 175 millimeters of pen means that you've got more than enough penetration to be able to deal with mo most tanks as well. Alrighty then, so what's my plan? Hopefully to hit this T-52. Ooh, baby, that's a big old hit. Great stuff. Talking about big old hits, that KB-2 probably wants to give me a big old hit as well. But I'm going to come forwards again, maybe a little bit greedy here. I'm going to fire again and put another big old hit into that tank as well. I even managed to spot the box tank there, so maybe that'll even get a little bit of vision. So you want to make sure when you come around this corner that you're hugging the left. If you don't hug the left, then that means that you can get shot uh, from in front. So always make sure you hug the left. It's a real big advantage that the southern spawn has. We hit a box tank and you can see we are stacking up the damage right now. Absolutely stacking up the damage. Oh, talk about stacking up the damage. We won't have many hit points left if we fight that. That's an AT-15A. That is one of the most scary tanks you're ever going to play against at tier 7, if not the most scary tank in this kind of a situation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of there. I'm gonna get out of there. Um, yeah, that's that's no longer a fight for me. So what I'm gonna do is maybe go and try and help out my team in this scenario, or maybe even I can get that AT-15A if he's ah, if he's gonna do that. Maybe I can go back. Maybe I can go back there and back again. An IS tail, huh? Let's try and go after this KV-3. Is he going to be aiming for me on this corner? He definitely is. Um, 
obviously it's the two tier 7 soviets going after each other. I've got to be real careful when I side scrape in this tank because it's actually a terrible side scraper because your whole mid plate really sucks. But I have to come around really slowly and he's actually side scraping well as well. He's actually side scraping very well. I don't have intuition to be able to get him. Um, yeah, that's not good. I'm trying to think about how I can set this game up. Uh, I actually think that I have to cross. This is a little bit brash, but I feel like I have to do this. I have to create more angles on my opponents. One thing that you don't ever want to be in is in just a situation where you're all just sitting on the same corner against opponents that are taking different angles. So you'll see that when I'm playing these tanks with their horrible gun handling and accuracy, I come around the corner really slowly. And the reason why we come around the corner really slowly is then we can give them a nice big hit without having to use vert stabs or a rotation device or an accuracy device. Of course, the accuracy device is still nice, but I feel like I get value out of my turbos. It's just the way that I like to play. Um, but it's also important that I do give you good recommendations for the play styles that you may have. And I do think that especially on a map in a situation like this, you probably do better with an accuracy device than a, a turbo. But you can see that as long as we're aiming at least reasonably well, we seem to still be able to hit most of our shells here. Come around the corner slowly, put a round into the blank prints, finish him off. This is actually looking like it could be quite a good game. Do I have most of my hit points left? I do. Is that AT-15 aiming at me? It looks like he is. I should probably still aim at that tiger. Ooh, KV-3's coming around the corner. I'm going to tell my team that I'm going to help them, and then I'm going to come around to this corner and be able to engage them from behind the church. That's the plan. Um, the only problem is now is that if I do this, that means that the AT-15 is going to be able to come around the corner. Okay, I don't think the KV-3 is going to come around. So I'm actually going to go this way instead. And I'm going to make them think that I'm not engaging. Okay, that's a disaster. Absolute disaster. I've got to come around the corner, put one into the AT-15 and reduce him at least to a one-shot now. There's a big difference between an AT-15 being a one-shot and not a one-shot. Because the AT-15 is such a, a damage-based tank. I don't have my repair kit, so I can't come around that corner anymore. I can't risk it. I can't risk coming around that corner right now. I'm just going to have to let the Oni uh, weather the storm. If I get tracked again uh, for an open shot like that, it's going to be a complete disaster. Uh, I could try and side scrape against the Tiger here, I guess. I could do that because then I won't be in like a, a death situation. It's still not good, though. Do I spot the tiger out? He's probably going to spot me. I can't. Yeah, he spots me instantly. I'm not. I'm not risking that. I'm not risking that. They know what's up. I'm just going to have to let it ham. Let it happen uh, for a little bit. I don't think there's unless I don't think there's too much pressure on me. How did the KV3 die? Was that all the Stritzfang and the Arty? If so, well played to them. They did a real good job. I'm going to come around here and see if I can hit the T29 from an angle that he probably didn't expect. I'll talk about an angle that he didn't expect. The Cheeto actually got me from an angle I didn't expect. Well, I just learned something now. And that is that you can use this corner to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, I feel like I've got to maybe use the inside here. Maybe hotshot the T29 quickly. There we go. So, if you hug the, the church here, I'm learning things of this map right now that you don't get shot from that corner. So a little bit of a misplay there by me. I won't make that mistake again. What's this tiger aiming at? Not at me. All right, we come close to the corner. We press R once. We speed it up a little bit because he might try and escape. An Omega low roll for 322 out of 390. That's not what we wanted. AT-15 has fired once. I might be able to catch his weak point here. Come around the corner slowly. Try and aim for the weak point. He's hiding it well. Is he going to panic back? Kind of is. Oh, I tried it. I'm going to load a gold shell here for the AT-15, which I think will be the first premium shell that I fired this this whole video. So that's not bad. Free to play baby in the house, even though I'm on my main account. I should probably try and reverse side scrape here, I think. Yeah, I think this will be for the best. He can just jam me in the turret, though, so I've got to watch out for that as well. And... Gotcha. Wow, three kills, 3,500 damage for a tier 7 tank. I'm I, I, I'm not usually impressed by my um, by how safely I play, but I do feel like I've been quite disciplined in this game, which which is nice. At least one game, one game out of the four that I'm going to play today, at least maybe that'll be reasonably okay. Um, so I don't want to get caught by this Cheeto once again, so I'm going to just reverse side scrape. It's your friend in these kinds of vehicles. Okay, no one there. Um, I guess I can get in on the corner. Maybe and hotshot this KV-2. Or maybe my team needs me to try and approach from this angle. Oh, this is a tough one. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, I think me being down the alleyway right now is the correct play. And then I, if I catch the Cheeto, then I catch the Cheeto, which could work out. I don't think I can cap really here and not just get bludgeoned by the RT. I've still got eight minutes to work, so I've got more than enough time to be able to handle this. I think I'm just going to come around the corner really slowly again. And oh god, there's a KV2. Okay, well, I'm probably going to lose a few hit points to RT. I'll try and figure out where my best bet is to not get hit by RT here. Um, oh lord, at least I now know where the SPG is. I'm going to tell my team where the artillery is. I'm not going to use my med kit, it's unnecessary. One thing that you shouldn't do, and one thing that I've been noticing I've been doing recently, is I'll just randomly use my med kit um, when it's not really advantageous for me to do so. Okay, there goes the Cheeto. I've got to fully aim this one. Oh, now I've got to use the med kit, see? And we get back, maybe quick enough. All right, well, Artie's going to focus me. I don't feel like I have a choice. I've got to go after this guy. I think I've got uh, time. His friends might be able to get me, but I just don't think I've got time. i got to go for this. i got to go for this. Maybe his friends shoot me, maybe they don't. Aim it a little bit. Finish him off. Five kills. Okay, what's the threat now? It's the artillery in the corner. I can use this building to avoid the artillery threat. Three, two, and one. And job done by the looks of it. Well, this this could have been a top gun if I'd managed to uh, to to not cap, but I don't mind. I'm just just happy to be able to take down this win and get 4,000 damage and five kills, showing you why the alpha damage on this gun you can't make up for it. If I was using the 100 millimeter, I think I have one extra degree of gun depression and I have a, a bit better gun handling. But for me personally, why wouldn't you want to play the tank to its strength? And for me, with the IS, it's that alpha damage impact get that alpha damage impact going this is a really good game actually 1423 base experience we make a great amount of profit even if we were to take away the the 40,000 credits because we didn't need to fire too many gold rounds i think just one against the 8015 and we just took it down because of that alpha damage this vehicle has with the 122 so while you should play the tank to however you like to play it i'd say I'd say the 100mm do, will do well in the hands of players who have got a lot of gold to fire the premium rounds because they do have better pen. But I think that the free-to-play players out there who want to try and uh, invest into ambush tactics will probably do better with the 122. And luckily, it looks like with that big amount of experience that we got from that ace tanker, we can even get ourselves another field mod. So of course, I'm going to take all-terrain suspension to be able to get around a little bit faster. And my IS just got a little bit more healthy as well. All right, so ladies and gents, boys and girls, those were the worst tier seven tanks of their class, at least with regards to win ratio. Uh, however, my win rate today was pretty darn decent. We won every single round there. And well, you know, 2,400 combined isn't exactly the best average uh, tier seven. It's not bad considering how poor these vehicles are for their average performance. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe it was just the fact that I was playing with, with one skill cruise today, or the fact that I was playing with, you know, your regular kind of equipment and without field mods. Or maybe you just like the fact that I was playing the worst tanks rather than the best ones for a change. If you did and you want to see more live gameplay like this on YouTube, then make sure you give the video a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments down below were any of these tanks a surprise to you that they came up on the the worst of tier 7 list? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.